contouring. Learning objectives. At the end of this topic, you will be able to define contouring, discuss the considerations for choosing proper contour interval, describe the characteristics of contours, explain the methods of locating contours, list the uses of contour maps. Outcomes. By the end of this topic, you will be able to understand contouring, know the considerations for choosing proper contour interval, know the characteristics of contours, list out the methods of locating contours, know the uses of contour maps. General terms. The value of plan or map is highly enhanced if the relative position of the points is represented both horizontally as well as vertically. Such maps are known as topographic maps. Thus, in a topographic survey, both horizontal as well as vertical control are required. On a plan, the relative altitudes of the points can be represented by shading, hachures, form lines or contour lines. Out of these, contour lines are most widely used because they indicate the elevations directly. Contour A contour is an imaginary line on the ground joining the points of equal elevation. It is a line in which the surface of ground is intersected by a level surface. A contour line is a line on the map representing a contour. Figure shows a pond with water at an elevation of 101.00 meters as shown in the plan by the watermark. If the water level is now lowered by 1 meter, another watermark representing 100.00 m elevation will be obtained. These watermarks may be surveyed and represented on the map in the form of contours. A topographic map presents a clear picture of the surface of the ground. Let us see about contour interval. The vertical distance between any two consecutive contours is called contour interval. The contour interval is kept constant for a contour plan. Otherwise, the general appearance of the map will be misleading. The horizontal distance between the two points on two consecutive contours is known as horizontal equivalent and depends upon the steepness of the ground. The choice of proper contour interval depends upon the following considerations. 1. The nature of the ground. The contour interval depends upon whether the country is flat or highly undulated. A contour interval chosen for a flat ground will be highly unsuitable for the undulated ground. For every flat ground, a small interval is necessary. If the ground is more broken, greater contour intervals should be adopted. Otherwise, the contours will come too close to each other. 2. The scale of the map. The contour interval should be inversely proportional to the scale. If the scale is small, the contour interval should be large. If the scale is large, the contour interval should be small. 3. The purpose and extent of the survey. The contour interval largely depends upon the purpose and the extent of the survey. For example, if the survey is intended for detailed design work or for accurate earthwork calculations, small contour interval is to be used. The extent of survey in such cases will generally be small. In the case of location surveys, for lines of communications and for reservoir and drainage areas, where the extent of survey is large, a large contour interval is to be used. 4. Time and expense of field and office work. If the time available is less, greater contour interval should be used. If the contour interval is small, greater time will be taken in the field survey, in reduction and in plotting the map. Considering all these aspects, the contour interval for a particular contour plan is selected. This contour interval is kept constant in that plan, otherwise it will mislead the general appearance of the ground. The following table suggests some suitable values of contour interval. The values of contour interval for various purposes are suggested below. For general topographical work, the general rule that may be followed is as follows. Let us see the characteristics of contours. The following characteristic features may be used while plotting or reading a contour plan.
One, two contour lines of different elevations cannot cross each other. If they did, the point of intersection would have two different elevations, which is absurd. However, contour lines of different elevations can intersect only in the case of an overhanging cliff or a cave. Two, contour lines of different elevations can unite to form one line only in the case of a vertical cliff. Three, contour lines close together indicate steep slope. They indicate a gentle slope if they are far apart. If they are equally spaced, uniform slope is indicated. A series of straight, parallel, and equally spaced contours represent a plane surface. Thus, in the figure three point six, steep slope is represented at A A, a gentle slope at B B, a uniform slope at C C, and a plane surface at D D. Four, a contour passing through any point is perpendicular to the line of steepest slope at that point. This agrees with three. Since the perpendicular distance between contour lines is the shortest distance, five a closed contour line with one or more higher one inside it represents a hill. Similarly, a closed contour line with one or more lower ones inside it indicates a depression without an outlet. Six two contour lines having the same elevation cannot unite and continue as one line. Similarly, a single contour line cannot split into two lines. This is evident because the single line would otherwise indicate a knife edge ridge or depression which does not occur in nature. However, two different contours of the same elevation may approach very near to each other. Seven, a contour line must close upon itself, though not necessarily within the limits of the map. Eight. Contour lines cross a watershed or ridge line at right angles. They form curves of U shape, rounded, with a concave side of the curve towards the higher grounds. Figure nine. Contour lines cross a valley line at right angles. They form sharp curves of V shape across it with convex side of the curve towards the higher ground. Figure. If there is a stream, the contour on either side turning upstream. May disappear in coincidence with the edge of the stream and cross underneath the water surface. Ten. The same contour appears on either side of a ridge or a valley. For the highest horizontal plane that intersects the ridge, must cut it on both sides. The same is true for the lower horizontal plane that cuts a valley. Let us see the methods of locating contours. The methods of locating contours depends upon the instruments used. In general, the field method may be divided into two classes: a, the direct method; b, the indirect method. Let us see the direct method of locating contours. Direct method. In the direct method, the contour to be plotted is actually traced on the ground. Only those points are surveyed which happen to be plotted. After having surveyed those points, they are plotted and contours are drawn through them. The method is slow and tedious. And it is used for small areas where great accuracy is required. The field work is twofold: one, vertical control, location of points on the contour, and two, horizontal control, survey of those points. One, vertical control. The points on the contours are traced either with the help of a level and staff, or with the help of a hand level. The staff is kept on the BM. And height of the instrument is determined. If the BM is not nearby, fly leveling may be performed to establish a temporary benchmark (TBM) in that area. Having known the height of the instrument, the staff reading is calculated so that the bottom of the staff is at an elevation equal to the value of the contour. For example, if the height of the instrument is one hundred and one point eight zero meters, the staff reading. To get a point on the contour of hundred point zero zero meters will be one point eight zero meters. Taking one contour at a time, say hundred point zero meter contour, the staff man is directed to keep the staff on the points on the contour so that the reading of one point eight zero meter is obtained every time. Thus, in figure, the dots represent the points determined 
by this method. 2. Horizontal control. After having located the points on various contours, they are to be surveyed with a suitable control system. The system to be adopted depends mainly on the type and extent of areas. For small area, chain surveying may be used and the points may be located by offsets from the survey lines. In a work of larger nature, a traverse may be used. The transverse may be a theodolite or a compass or a plain table traverse. In the direct method, two survey parties generally work simultaneously, one locating the points on the contours and the other surveying those points. If the work is of small nature, the points may be located first and then surveyed by the same party. In the figure 3.9, the points shown by dots have been surveyed with respect to points A and B, which may be tied by a traverse as shown by chain dotted lines. Let us see the indirect method of locating contours. In the indirect method, some suitable guide points are selected and surveyed. The guide points need not necessarily be on the contours. The guide points plotted serve as a basis for the interpolation of contours. This is the method most commonly used in engineering surveys. The following are some of the indirect methods of locating the ground points. 1. By squares. The method is used when the area to be surveyed is small and the ground is not very much undulating. The area to be surveyed is divided into a number of squares. The size of the square may vary from 5 to 20 m depending upon the nature of the contour and contour interval. The elevations of the corners of the square are then determined by means of a level and staff. The contour lines can be drawn by interpolation. It's not necessary that the squares may be of the same size. Sometimes, rectangles are also used in place of squares. When there are appreciable breaks in the surface between corners, guide points, in addition to those at corners, may also be used. The method is also known as spot levelling. 2. By cross-sections In this method, cross-sections are run transversed to the centre line of a road, railway canal, etc. The method is most suitable for railway route surveys. The spacing of the cross-section depends upon the character of the terrain, the contour interval and the purpose of the survey. The cross-sections should be more closely spaced, where the contours curve abruptly, as in ravines or on spurs. The cross-section and the points can then be plotted and the elevation of each point is marked. The contour lines are interpolated on the assumption that there is uniform slope between two points on two adjacent contours. Thus, in figure, the points marked with dots are the points actually surveyed in the field, while the points marked with X on the first cross-section are the points interpolated on contours. The same method may also be used in the direct method of contouring with a slight modification. In the method described above, points are taken almost at regular intervals on a cross-section. However, the contour points can be located directly on the cross-section as in the direct method. For example, if the height of the instrument is 101.80 and if it is required to trace a contour of 100 meters on the ground, the leveling staff is placed on several guide points on the cross-section so that the staff readings on all such points are 1.80 meters and all these points will be on 100 meter contour. The guide points of different contours are determined first on one cross line and then on another instead of first on one contour and then on another as in the direct method. If there are irregularities in the surface between two cross lines, additional guide points may be located on intermediate cross lines. If required, some of the cross lines may also be chosen at any inclination other than 90 degrees to the main line. 3. By tachyometric method. In the case of hilly terrain, the tachyometric method may be used with advantages. A tachyometer is a theodolite fitted with stadia diaphragm so that staff readings against all the three hairs may be taken. 
The staff intercept S is then obtained by taking the difference between the readings against the top and bottom wires. The line of sight can make any inclination with the horizontal, thus increasing the range of instrument observations. The horizontal distances need not be measured since the tachymeter provides both horizontal as well as vertical control. Thus, if theta is the inclination of the line of sight with horizontal figure, the horizontal distance d between the instrument and the staff and the vertical distance in elevation v between the instrument axis and the point in which the line of sight against the central wire intersects the staff are given by d equal to k1 s cos square theta plus k2 cos theta and v is equal to d tan theta where k1 and k2 are instrumental constants. The tachyometer may be set on a point from which greater control can be obtained. Radial lines can then be set making different angles with either the magnetic meridian or with the first radial line figure. On each radial line, readings may be taken on leveling staff kept at different points. The point must be so chosen that approximate vertical difference in elevation between two consecutive points is less than the contour interval. Thus, on the same radial line, the horizontal equivalent will be smaller for those two points, the vertical difference in elevation of which is greater and vice versa. Let us see the uses of contour maps. The following are some of the important uses of contour maps. 1. Drawing of sections. 2. Determination of intervisibility between two points. 3. Tracing of contour gradients and location of route. 4. Measurement of drainage areas. 5. Calculation of reservoir capacity. 6. Intersection of surfaces and measurement of earthwork. 7. The nature of ground and its shape can be estimated. 8. Military uses contour maps for strategic planning. 9. It is possible to identify suitable site for any project from the contour map of the region. 10. For pilots. Contour maps help to know how high the ground is going to be, thereby they can fly over it and not in. Summary Let's summarize. A contour is an imaginary line on the ground joining the points of equal elevation. The vertical distance between any two consecutive contours is called contour interval. The choice of proper contour interval depends upon 1. The nature of the ground 2. Scale of the map. 3. The purpose and extent of the survey. 4. Time and expense of field and office work. The methods of locating contours are divided into two classes. A. The direct method. B. The indirect method. In the direct method, the contour to be plotted is actually traced on the ground. In the indirect method, some suitable guide points are selected and surveyed.